Hello, this video is going to uh, show some examples of doing statistical process control charts. The focus of this video is on variables. We did a separate one on attributes, but in this one, in order to highlight the difference between variables and attributes, I'm going to do one that's variables and then just review a control chart for attributes just to highlight the difference uh, between the two types of data. So, a variable is a is a is a data or information that is con that that has the potential to be continuous, speed, weight, si uh, dimensions, those sorts of things, where you can have multiple values. Uh, an attribute, on the other hand, is binary: yes, no, pass, fail, uh, and it has a different set of control charts. When we do X bar average control charts and R range charts, we need to do both for variables because we are we're, we need to look simultaneously at both the average of the process but also the variability of the process so you draw samples you take the average of your sample and then you look at whether that fits into your control limits but you then also have to look at the variability imagine and let me give you this example Example, imagine if you took three uh, samples, the first one was 9, the second one was 10, the third one was 11, your average would be 10, and that would be the midpoint, and your range or variability would be the difference between the top value, 11, and the bottom value, 9, which is 2. So you're clustered fairly closely around that mean, and that's generally pretty good. Now if I drew another sample where I took nine, uh, sorry, 0, 10, and 20, in that circumstance I would still have an average of 10, so I would appear to be doing well, but my range would be from 0 to 20, uh, which, is, which is significant and would likely be more than I'd be happy with. So that's why we need to look at both central tendency and also variation. So then, having introduced that, let's go look at an example. So here's a, here's a question you could get for statistical process control. After receiving numerous complaints about the speed on a section of road, the county government collected random samples of five cars for six consecutive days. They recorded the speed of every car in the daily sample. The results are presented below. And so here we have the data. Residents suggest that radar system that displays to drivers how fast they're going will slow them down. They're complaining that it's too quick and reduce the average speed and the number of cars speeding. The county installs the system and collects samples of five cars for five consecutive days. This data is provided below. So again, they take a sample of five cars going by and, and record it, in this case for five days. They now want to determine whether there have been any changes as a result of the speed indicator. Construct the appropriate three sigma process control analysis and determine whether you conclude there has been any change due to the installation of the speed monitoring and display system. In fact, is the speed display an assignable cause that has changed the process? So you're going to benchmark the process using a statistical process control using this data. And then you're going to evaluate this data to see if it's just the same natural variation or if there, there is an assignable cause that has actually changed the process somehow. In this case, the change to the process may be good if it achieves what they want, but that's what we're going to evaluate. So let's take a look. In this case, we have speed, 70, 60, 61, 69, 64. This is a variable. So we know we need to do an X bar and an R chart. So X bar is simply the average. So we're going to take the average of each sample. So for this one, 70, 60, 61, 69, 64, the average is 64.8. And we'll do that for each one of the days, 64.8. You know how to calculate an average, so I'm not going to go through it in detail. 64.8, 64.2, and 63.6. So in this case, we have that averages. We can now calculate X bar bar, which is the average of the averages. And we will take the average, we'll total those, divide by 6, and we'll get 
0.5. So that's x bar bar. Now we need to look at the range or the variability. And in this circumstance, for range, we look at the difference between the largest value and the smallest value. So in this circumstance, it's 70 and 60. So the range is 10. Here we have 71 and 60. So the range is 11. Here we have 72 and 61, so the range is 11, and we will do the same thing as we go through the remaining days. We then do our bar, which is the average of the ranges, add those up, divide by 6, and we get 10.3. So our average range is 10.3. The last data point that we require, or, or the last piece of information that we require, is n and so clearly I've I've not made it easy because there are six days and five samples within within each day and so in this case n is equal to five we look at we took samples for six days but we took five samples each day so n is equal to five so now we can do the control limits for the start of our process so let's do that First, we will do X bar charts, and X bar, we have upper control limit X bar is equal to X bar bar plus A2, sorry, not A squared, A2 times R bar, which in this case is equal to 64.5, which was just the average, plus I'm going to leave A2 empty for now, and 10.3, which was our average range. For A2, we go to um, a table that is, let me just check to make sure that's showing up there. This is a photocopy of the, or a photo of the table from the book that I use, but you can find them online, and almost any book that covers statistical process control will have this. So in this case, we have A2, which is the measure for an X bar chart, and then we look at the sample size and we know that our sample size is 5 and so we go the A2 that we're going to use is 0 0.577 so you just refer to the table we'll come back to D4 and D3 which we use for the R bar chart so A2 from the formula look at 5 0 0.577 so we'll put 0 0.577 in here equals 70.4 and then the upper control limit for, uh, sorry, the lower control limit, I'm sorry, for X bar is equal to X bar bar minus A2 times R bar equals 64.5 minus 0 0.577 times 10.3 is equal to 58.6. So we have X bar bar 64.5, which is our center point, and we have lower control limit and an upper control limit. And if we look at our original data, we don't look at each individual measure. We look at, this is a control chart for the average, and all of those numbers fall within those control limits. So our process is in control to start with. So let's look at upper control limit then for R is equal to D4 times R bar is equal to D4 where we'll go back to this table, we'll look at 5 and we will get 2.115 as the number, 2.115 is equal to 21.77 that is the upper control limit for range given our sample lower control limit for R is equal to D3 times R bar which is again just back to the same table D3 for 5 it's 0 equals 0 times 10.3 equals zero. So our lower control limit for range is zero. And again, we can go back to our original data. 
and say clearly our range is in between, all of our ranges are between 0 and 21.77. So the process uh, uh, is stable and in control. Then the question was when we put up the machine, did we change the process? And uh, if we change the process, that means it could be for the better or for the worse. So we will look at what students will often do is say, oh, we got something different. We'll do lower control. We'll do control limits the same as we just did. And, and then they'll say, well, the control limits are different. So uh, the process is different. And that's not what you do. What you do is you take these numbers and evaluate them against your, your process, uh, against your control limits. So in this case, we will average here. We'll do X bar. We'll get... Uh, 64.8, 6, 64.8, 64.4, 65.6, and so we had upper control limits before. Uh, let's just do uh, let's just do range. So we have a max of. 73 and a, a min of 57, so R is equal to 16. We have a max of 75 and a min of 58, so we have a range of 17. We have a max of 73 and a min of 57, so we have 16. And again, we'll do the same thing, we have 23 and 17. So we can look at this and say, okay, our upper control limit for X was equal to 70.4. Our lower control limit for X was equal to 21 point, uh, sorry, 58, 58.6. So all of those are inside. So we have not changed the speed. So if our objective was, to change the speed, the 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 sign was not in a, the 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 display was not an assignable clause that would do that. So then we had upper control limit for R was equal to 21.8, and our lower control limit for R was equal to zero. And we look at our ranges, and four out of five are within the ranges, but one of them is above the range. And if you look. All of our measures are above that central, uh, above that central. So this would give us some pause and say, wait a minute, we seem to have a process that has changed. Now, in this case, the process has not changed for the better. What has happened is some people have slowed down and some people have sped up. So the average didn't change but the variability did. So you slowed some people down, which was the objective, but you've clearly got some people who are looking at uh, this display and driving faster to see how fast uh, the display will show them going. So uh, something has changed. The process is no longer in control, but the process has not changed from a positive perspective, which shows you why it is important to look at both the mean and the range in terms of variability. So that's how to calculate X bar, R bar, and how to put, the, put them into control limits and how to evaluate those control limits. Let's look quickly at another question. Here we have a, a similar question. County got, cons got numerous complaints and and went out and recorded the number of cars that were speeding out of a hundred cars. So they took a speed measure for a hundred cars and looked at it and then recorded how many were speeding. So on day one, 16 out of a hundred were speeding. Day two, eight out of a hundred were speeding and so on. Uh, and then they put up the display and then they have new. So they did it again and they, and they had new data. So in this particular instance, uh, if we were going to do a process control chart, we would look and we'd say, wait a minute, we've, we're looking at 
at speed, but we're not recording speed. We're only recording whether they were going faster than 60 kilometers an hour or not. So in this particular instance, we now have an attribute, right? It's speeding or not speeding. We didn't record the speed, but we do have N, which is 100. So we can do a P chart. So in that circumstance, N is equal to 100. Uh, P bar is equal to 112, which is the total of all of these numbers divided by 100 times 10 equals 0.112, which means 11.2% of the cars that were recorded were speeding. We can then come up with the standard deviation of P bar, which is equal to the square root of P bar minus, sorry, times one minus P bar over N which is equal to the square root of 0 0.112 times 1 minus 0 0.112 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.032. So that's the standard deviation. Upper control limit for P bar is equal to P bar plus 3 times, sorry, three times sigma p, which we've already calculated, is equal to 0 0.112 plus three times 0 0.032 is equal to 0 0.208. So we're, we're up to 20% is, is the normal process. And then similarly, the lower control limit is equal to 0 0.112 minus three times 0 0.032 is equal to 0 0.016. So we didn't get all the way down to zero. So then we would simply look at the new data. And here we have 0 0.09, 0 0.01, 0 0.10, 0 0.05, 0 0.0, sorry, not. So in this circumstance, this data is made up, so uh, it doesn't matter if the results are different from the last one. In this circumstance, this is within the control limit. This is lower than the control limit. This is within the control limit. This is lower than the lower control limit. So in this circumstance, we've gone and we've changed the process. This looks like we have a lower number of people speeding. So it worked. In this example, it worked. In the last example, it didn't work, but this highlights how you would do the control chart, look at the, the process afterwards. We know that the assignable cause is likely this, this speed meter that they've put out. And in this circumstance, it looks like we've changed it. So when you are doing statistical process control charts, do you have an attribute or a variable? If you have an attribute, you do a P chart. If you know N or a C chart, if no N, and we'd introduce the C chart in another, in another video. And if you have a variable, you do X bar and R charts. So you look at both the mean and the range uh, and you do that comparison. So quite, quite easy. The two things you need to really uh, pay attention to is do you have an attribute or a variable and what is N? If you can do those, uh, the process is quite simple. Thanks for your time and have a great day.